This is a Power BI report that I made in around three hours using ChatGPT. I started with a wireframe that looks like this, that has all of the different positions and all of the different elements that I want on my dashboard. Then I got ChatGPT to make me some mockups of my actual report and generate some data. I even used some tricks to make the mockups as close to what I wanted as possible. And the best part is actually taking just all of the measures that I need from ChatGPT and entering them into your model in just one go. So now you can see that you've got all of the measures that you need. If you're interested in the full walkthrough, there'll be a link in the description to my classroom, which has an absolutely full walkthrough of how to make this report as well as tons of others. It all starts and ends with the wireframe. Now, this is a very easy wireframe that I've created just in PowerPoint. It's got text boxes and shapes to basically, you know, to make this format. And you might even be able to tell that it's just one column that's been copied and pasted three different times with different categories for calls, chats, emails, and escalations. This is an IT ticket service overview. So if you've got ServiceNow or some other ticketing system, you might be, you know, it's like able to categorize those tickets into different categories, into different segments. And this is going to let you know how things are doing for all of those different segments at a glance. One thing that I'd like to point out is that what we're doing here is we're creating a Power BI report, which is essentially going to be a high fidelity mockup, which we're just taking this wireframe and we're going to put in mock data and create something that we can show the stakeholder. Now, I don't mean that we actually have to go all the way. Maybe it's just enough to create some AI generated images. But in a lot of cases, one thing that I found is that when you have stakeholders who don't know Power BI so well, having something that's a high fidelity report in side of Power BI, which can show them everything from interactions to filter filtering concepts can really get that buy in early as well as help you understand what their actual needs are. If you create a mock up report and you're able to just connect that to, you know, to your data set. Great. That usually never happens. But if you can spend half a day to create a report inside of Power BI to really give your stakeholders an understanding of what they should expect at the end of the project, and you can do that on day one, that's going to give you so much value because you'll be able to make sure that people are going to be happy with the end result. Okay, so let's start with just jumping right in. We have this image and, you know, it's like I'm basically just going to take it, put it into ChatGPT. I'm using ChatGPT 4.0 and I've tried a lot of different, you know, it's like other AIs. And currently I think ChatGPT is still the best at generating mockups. So I'm going to put the image in and I'm going to write this short, very easy prompt. I'm going to say, this is a mockup of a dashboard for Power BI. It represents IT ticket resolution and there is text to indicate how it should be built. So all of the text is here and can you create a reasonably high fidelity mock-up image that takes into account four different colors for the ticket types and focuses on good UI and UX laws? Now, this isn't a perfect prompt. Of course, you could give it more context by saying who it's for, or you could give it, a, you know, it's like a more information about what kind of design elements you would like. You could even specify which colors you'd like to use. But here, I'm just trying to, you know, to showcase how easy it is to actually, you know, to utilize um, AI for something like this. And um, it is genuinely easy. Now, this is actually what it gave me, which perfectly honest, it's, it's not something that I love. But if you actually try a couple of times, you might find that you have different results. So this is one example that I have. And these are two other examples with the exact same prompt. Now, this one I, I really like, I think it has does a really good job of showing most of the different elements that I want. And this is another one, which is honestly a lot worse in my opinion, but you know, it's like, it still works out in the way that I would be more than happy to show this to a stakeholder to say, is this kind of what you're, you know, it's like around the ballpark of what you're expecting at the end. Maybe, you know, it's like at this point, people might say, I don't want the, uh, you know, it's like pie chart. I want something a little bit more, you know, it's like substantial. And that would be fine. And that would be really good feedback for you to know before you start developing. One little trick that you can do to enhance this process is you can actually create a background, whether it's in PowerPoint, in Figma, wherever, and you can add it to your, you know, it's like input. So ChatGPT, so I'm using ChatGPT 4.0 and most other, you know, it's like LLMs are able to take images 
Now, I think there are some, you know, it's like AI, it's like um, LLMs that don't allow you to put in images, but for the purposes of AI generation, being able to add images is great because now what I can do is I can say, this is a mock-up of a dashboard for Power BI. It represents IT ticket resolution, same as before, but now I want you to create a reasonably high fidelity mock-up image that takes into account the four different colors for our ticket types make the image look at it like an Apple product. That's just a little sentence that I added in hopes that, you know, it's like it will make it look a little bit, you know, it's like nicer. Use the background image as a base, 16 by nine frame. So this is the background image. It's literally called background image, the file name. So I'm hoping that this will be good enough for it to generate something that looks way better than the previous one. Okay, and from that prompt with, you know, it's like a little bit more information, like with the background, we have something that, may actually be good enough to start, you know, it's like showing people and saying, hey, is this something along the lines of what you'd like to see? Another example of, you know, it's like the same prompt is this, where we have, you know, it's like different versions, but now it's got a little less variation because it still tries to keep the background as much as possible, which I think is a really big step up from the previous, you know, it's like mockups that we created. Okay, so now that we have like an actual mockup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to add ChatGPT to create a data set. It's going to be a really simple prompt again. And I'm literally just saying, I want to make a mock data set to replicate this report in Power BI. I've attached the wireframe and a mock-up of how I expect it might look like. So it's the same wireframe and you can go and pause the video and, you know, it's like uh, read through exactly what I've put in, but you can actually see that there's not so much different information. Like uh, this, might, uh, this column chart is just saying uh, ticket type resolution time conditionally formatted to be gray, if not within, you know, it's like ticket type, SLA reference line showing average resolution time. Really simple, doesn't, you know, it's like uh, need to say more than that as well as this specific one. Now, this is still the cherry picked, you know, it's like best uh, mockup that uh, ChatGPT generated out of like, I want to say five different times. And one thing that you'll realize that is that if you're using ChatGPT to generate images, it's really, really slow. So <laughs> that might take up, you know, it's like a good amount of your two hours. But, you know, it's like this is basically all that I'm going to do. And let's see what happens. So um, honestly, you know, it's like when I did this for the first time, I actually started doing this, uh, you know, it's like experimenting using ChatGPT for, you know, it's like Power BI developers, literally in the first month that it came out. I've been I've been testing this for many years, but um, honestly, I'm, I'm blown away about how good it is right now. Um, just looking through the output, you can see it identifies the different metrics and you can see it even has like SLA status, you know, it's like inside outside SLA. And you can see that that's only mentioned inside of the wireframe and it's still able to pick up, you know, it's like that might be something that you need. So what's the target hours? What's the resolution hours? Is it inside of SLA or not? You know, it's like, it's got a lot of information that it, you know, it's like basically could make as well as generic things like what's the ID, what's the type, what's the created and resolved dates, what category does it go into, etc. Perfect. That's exactly what I kind of need. So it also, uh, you know, it's like knows to separate these into different dimensions. So if you were doing like a star schema, presumably you could put in like a ticket type and a category as two dimension tables. Uh, or possibly, you know, it's like, uh, we're just going to try to go with a uh, one big table, you know, it's like data format, because this is technically still a high fidelity mockup, but it also tells me what kind of DAX measures I'll need. And, you know, it's like it suggests the number of records and it's going to generate a mock data set for me to download. So that's perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, it's like generate literally one word and I'm, it's going to, you know, to give me the CSV file, which I can load directly into Power BI. So it does this pretty well. And you can see that, um, you know, it's, it's created basically everything. Now, one thing that I will say is that this is still, you know, it's like probably good enough for a mock data set, but you might find that, uh, you know, it's like the distribution of the data is like almost completely even, like um, it, it's entirely possible. You might have to ask it to, you know, it's like generate a couple different variations and add some, you know, it's like variants. Maybe we might find that the number of tickets is exactly the same between every single, you know, it's like type of tickets. And, you know, it's like these kind of things do happen. But, you know, the fact that I, I gave it a mock-up and it's, you know, it's like figuring out what kind of data that I need in order to pull this off is still really great. So we're going to download this and we're going to 
chuck this into Power BI first. So this is my brand new Power BI file. And we can see that this is, you know, it's like just a certain amount of data that we're going to load in. And that was actually 4,000 rows of data. That's completely fine by me. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in all of the different measures that I was talking about. You see that up here, you know, it's like it talks about the different measures that I'm going to need. So we're going to try to bring all of those in. Okay, at this point, uh, you know, it's like it's written out all of the different measures, like what's the total number of tickets, what's the past number of tickets, etc. You know, what's the average resolution time, etc. And it's even given me conditional formatting for the, you know, it's like KPI cards as well as, you know, it's like the resolution color, if it's gray or not. You might remember that in the mockup, I mentioned that I want the color to be gray if it's not within the SLA reference type. So that is a whole bunch of stuff. But the problem with asking ChatGPT to do DAX, other than the fact that ChatGPT is not the greatest at DAX, is, you know, it's like, do I have to copy this one by one into my Power BI report? I don't want to do that. So here's a way where you can just, you know, it's like make this into one, you know, it's like a piece of code that you can download into Power BI. So first we're going to go to the actual Power BI report. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I consider best practice, which is I'm going to go to the modeling tab and create a measures table, right? It's going to be something that looks like this. And this measures table is just going to create an empty table here. So a uh, little trick that you can do is if you put in a measure, uh, we can literally call this just blank uh, equals blank. Sure. So if you have a measure here and you right click on the value and you press hide, then the measure, uh, you know, it's like table actually, you know, it's like just becomes this little thing. Oh, actually, that was supposed to change the, you know, it's like icon, but I guess that doesn't work right now. Ah, uh, well, it's fine. Okay, so we have this measures table. And what we're going to do is we're going to use DAX query view. Now you can use Timdal if you want. I've just found that DAX query view has a much simpler syntax. So it's way easier for ChatGPT to write bulk measures to put into, you know, it's like your actual Power BI report. So this is what it's going to look like. In inside of your DAX query view, you're just going to take this blank measure and drag it in. I think you actually have to right click, uh, you know, it's like hover over quick queries, define all measures in this table. So if you de define all measures in this table, what it's going to do is it's going to show you this define measure underscore measures blank equals blank. Now this is what I'm going to copy and I'm going to say to ChatGPT, and I'm, I'm creating this prompt that says, please output all of the DAX as one piece of code following this syntax, define measure. And then, you know, it's like the measures table blank equals blank. Blank is the measure name denoted by, you know, it's like blank. And, you know, it's like measures in the single quotations is the table name measure define measure. So this statement defines the statement as a measure. Sounds a little bit wordy, but if I do all of this, what happens is I have all of the measures literally written in one piece of code that I can copy, go into my, you know, it's like um, DAX query view here. I can, you know, it's like just literally paste this here. And what that's going to do is if I click update model with changes, I can see 14 different measures that are created. Now you can see that there are some errors in the actual measures and it looks like it's looking for a date table. And that's fine because, you know, it's like past year, you know, it's like stuff is probably looking for a date table. But if I wanted to add one really quickly, I just go into Bravo, uh, which is an external tool that I've talked about a couple of times in my videos, manage dates, go into time intelligence and turn that off preview changes, apply changes, and that's the fastest date table that you can make. And once you've created a date table, all and you can see that the errors have disappeared and you just need to make sure that the date table is connected to your mock IT tickets somehow. I think by created date is probably the, the right way to go about it. And apologies if that was a little bit fast. Bravo is just an external tool, I believe by SQL BI, that you can use to create date tables very quickly. So that leaves me at a place where I've got all of the data, all of the different measures that I need, and I'm basically ready to you know, like start building something very quickly. Now, I, I kind of speed ran this, but I got to tell you that, you know, it's like taking all the measures and just placing them in here took me maybe 10 
15 minutes this isn't you know it's like too much but of course you can you know it's like if you have a json theme that you can apply to it that would be very helpful just to make you know it's like the report look a little bit better but at the end of the day uh you know it's like making something like this and then you know it's like converting it into something that looks like this is just going to be uh you know it's like design from there on and just a bunch of different formatting options in order to get where you want to go this is what it looks like spaced around with the background and this is what it looks like five maybe ten minutes later um the only thing that i've really done is okay so first of all the way that these have the way that these have been actually made is i just put in you know it's like the actual values like the total tickets or the you know it's like average resolution time or the total tickets by the category very very quickly into just regular native visuals but the way that i separated them from call chat email and escalation is i put into the visual level filter ticket type is call. And the reason I've done it in this way is that it affords me the ability to use something like this, where I use a single measure ticket type color to validate what color that I want to use. So you can see here that even though the icon for email is light blue, right now it's showing orange. So I can just go to ticket type color, go to email and type in light blue. And that will allow me to, you know, it's like just have a light blue color inside of basically all of the different elements that I've chosen for those visuals because they're filtered to the ticket type is equal to email. So that is basically it. This is absolutely something that you could make like today in just an hour, maybe a little bit more, but hopefully this has given you a lot of, you know, it's like insight into how you can actually use ChatGPT as a Power BI developer to create really high fidelity mockups. Let me know if you try it. Thanks and take care.